to tell my story. I tell my story because there's a lot of people who cannot. And either that's because they have children in school and they're afraid their kids will be made fun of, or maybe the person that trafficked them was a public figure. Um, and maybe, just maybe, uh, their lives are still in danger. And um, so I tell my story because I want to be their voice. And I may not be able to tell you the exact things that have happened to them, but I can tell you what happened to me. And it was the roughest thing I'd ever been through. And probably the lowest point of my life was being an early teenager and being in that situation where I realized that I was not free to come and go. I just remember laying there and I remember thinking, nobody's coming. They don't know where I am. I'm on my own. God was out of the picture. And nobody, nobody was coming. And what that did for me, though, was it kept me in survival mode long enough that eventually I was helped out of that situation. Um, and I don't see any difference, really, honestly, between um, someone who has been sold by a safe pimp or a woman working in prostitution because she has children to feed or she has an addiction to feed. Financial insecurity is a pimp as well. I don't see the difference because I promise you, I've never met no, I've never met any um, other survivors who said, you know what, I did it because I wanted to, and it was the best way, it was my choice, my body. I've never met anybody like that. I'm, I'm sure. You know, many times I've been asked by professionals, you know, what is the best way to handle uh, a situation where you believe that someone is being trafficked, uh, either for sex or labor? Um, and, you know, what I really want to let people know is that we may have had a lot of trauma, and we may have a lot of broken areas, but we still want to keep on to our dignity. I think that um, for me as I am, when I was going through therapy, it's like the people that connected with me the best were the people that acknowledged what I had been through and didn't feel sorry for me. But they showed me a way that I could work through it and that there was an end game in sight. And um, I just believe that's really important. So, you know, other things I would tell you is, um, you probably, you know, don't want to touch someone who might have been trafficked without their permission. That's been a really hard thing for some, some of the people I've worked with. Um, they're not used to that. And, and so they will lead you. I mean, like as a counselor, what you do is, you know, just kind of ask them the questions that get them to think about where they want their life to be or to explore an idea. And um, when you do that, you're giving them the ability to make choices. And choices is what we have never had. And how important that is today when you begin to recover and you begin to heal.